So hi folks, welcome to module 302. This is training for the Lush One Inca. And today we're going to look in more detail at the mixer signal processor that we introduced last time. Um, but we're going to focus particularly on the ability to mix signals. Um, in order to show you that, I've set up uh, an oscilloscope connected to the mixer. Um, and it's perhaps just useful to start with a recap of where we were at the end of the last module. So at the minute we've got um, just one input, just one input connected to the mixer, so it's the same configuration we used last time. Uh, at the minute the gain for that is turned down to zero, and we can use the DC offset control here to adjust the DC level. So if you look on the scope, you can see the DC level, which is centered on the uh, zeroed on the center of that scope is going up and down as I adjust the uh, DC offset. Okay, let's return that back to the center. Now I'm going to increase the gain on the input and you'll see that the sine wave, it's actually symmetrical about zero volts on this uh, setup, appears on the output. And again, we can use the DC offset control to change the level of that. And we mentioned that these LEDs here uh, indicate the output of the output voltage of the DC output um, and because we have a in this case we have a wave which is symmetrical about zero and it's oscillating quickly we see both appear to light up because of persistence of vision. If I lift this up a little bit higher you'll see only the positive indication lights up. Okay let's return that back to zero. Um, the other thing we talked about was the clipping so I'm just going to turn this gain up really high and push it up. You'll see right at the top of the screen that clips. Just in case you don't believe me, we'll just go to a different range on the scope. And you can see the top of these peaks has been flattened because of the voltage limit. If I move it down the other way, you'll see it clips the bottom of the peaks. And of course, you could, uh, if you had a big enough input, you could pick clip on both peaks. So that's really just a recap of where we were last time. Um, what I'm going to do now is return this back to a central position and set that reasonably low. Um, and we're going to patch in a second input to the signal processor mixer. So this time we're going to use it as a mixer as well as just a signal processor. But we're going to keep as keep the um, keep the DC output. I'm going to take the input from uh, the low frequency oscillator, the square wave LFO, which is actually on the Inca board, um, and I'm going to connect it to the second non-inverting input on the uh, mixer. So for the minute, I've got the gain on that non-inverting input turned down to uh, turned down to zero. But if I start to bring that gain up. You'll see the scope looks a little bit hard to interpret to begin with. Um, let me just change the parameters a little bit and trigger on the square wave. Hopefully you see something now that looks like uh, a square wave added to uh, a fast sine wave. I'll just change that onto a storage mode so hopefully you can see it a bit more clearly. So now let's look at these different controls. The gain on the square wave input controls how much of the square wave you get in the output. The gain on the sine wave input controls how much of the sine wave you get on the output. And the DC offset, because we're using the DC output here, moves the whole waveform up and down. The principle of the same operation applies to the two other inputs, but these are inverting inputs, which means that a positive input generates a negative output. But you can see with these three different controls that you can very freely manipulate how the different signals are combined uh, and how much of each of the uh, different components goes into the mixture. Well, that's looking at the mixer operation in principle. What I want to do show you now is how we use that mixer um, together with the DC output in order to combine control voltages in the Lush One. So what I've done here is I've patched the two inputs of the mixer or the two positive inputs of the mixer. The first ones 
coming from Oscillator 2 on the Lush 1 base and the second one is still coming from the LFO on the Lush 1 Inca. And you can see on the scope what we get here is a shifting pattern of uh, different voltages caused by the combination of the square waves and there's more explanation as to what's going on there in the slides. We're taking the DC output of the mixer and feeding it through into the control voltage input of oscillator 1 on the Lush 1 base and we've set oscillator 1 to run in a control voltage control mode. Now when you make that connection it's really important that you remember what we discussed last time about the range of possible output voltages of the mixer and make sure that you're using voltages that are compatible uh, with the uh, input and you can do that with a meter if you have a scope available you can do it with a scope or you can uh, rely on the LEDs in the uh, Lush One Inca. You can see here just the top LEDs lit uh, so we I'll move the wire so you can see that. You can see just the top LEDs is lit so we kind of know that this is positive voltage that we're providing. Okay I'm going to connect the um, output from that oscillator and you can hear what's going on. And as we for example adjust the DC offset then the central pitch changes change the contributions of the two LFOs and by changing the relative speed of the LFOs we get different audible patterns emerging. So that gives you some idea I'll take this off it's quite like that gives you some idea of the range of sounds or how you can use the uh, mixer to combine control voltages and of course it's not limited to control voltages going into the oscillators you can use it for any control voltage on any of the uh, modules on the Lush one. Um, what we're going to look at next is using the mixer to combine audio signals. Up to now we focused on using the signal processor and mixer for things like control voltages where we require a DC level. Uh, but for things like audio signals we don't normally want to have a DC component, we just want to have the signal itself without the DC level in it. And for that purpose the mixer contains both a DC output and an AC output. So to show you the difference I set up a signal here which has got a DC off offset on it and I'll just zero the scope so there's the DC, there's the 0 volt DC level and there's the signal with the DC offset. If I move the scope connection from the DC output to the AC output what you see you get is the same signal uh, but without the DC level on it and things like the filter or audio equipment in doesn't really expect to have signals with uh, DC levels on them so for non-control voltage applications you probably want to uh, start with the uh, start with the AC output so that's the AC output in principle I've patched that into the filter and we'll connect it out to the uh, sound system in a minute um, but then for the two inputs to the filter I'm going to take off that sine wave and we're going to bring in the oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 from the Lush 1 base as two inputs and I've set the Lush 1 base into OSC mode so that these two inputs are similar frequencies. So one thing I should say when you use the AC output is you generally want to leave this uh, DC offset centered so that you minimize the risk of clipping. You want to make sure the DC signal is towards the center of its range. Um, and now what I'm going to do is we will connect the uh, output of the filter through to the speaker and I will just turn up. This is 
hopefully there you go there's the sound of oscillator one and you can just about see that on the scope and here's oscillator two so I'm just going to turn both these oscillators up so you can hear them in combination so hopefully there you can hear that we get a beating effect with the two oscillators um, and in fact if you remember your physics then the frequency of the beat is the difference in the frequency of the two oscillators so I've set things up so I can shift the uh, frequency of oscillator 2 using the control voltage gain So you can hear you get different drone and beat effects. So I'm just going to unpatch the gate here and show you this playing some notes on the keyboard. Well, that's the kind of great effect. You can do uh, a lot of really punchy, bassline-y things with it. Um, so really shows you, I think, the power of the ability to uh, mix signals together. Um, for audio signals, the polarity is generally not audible, so you can also uh, use the negative inputs to, or the inverting inputs to the mixer to bring the uh, ex additional audio signals in as well. Um, and overall, it, it's a great tool for uh, uh, creating really rich sound effects. So I strongly suggest you play around with the mixer using different inputs. Um, check out the slides for some patches uh, using the, just the Lush One Bass and the Lush One Inca. But if you have more modules or external sources, then um, those will be great going into that as well. And next time, I think we'll probably look at the, the noise generator and maybe the sample and hold function on the Lush One Inca, uh, look a bit more at how we can use those things.